As I mentioned, there is much for us to think about and consider during this Holy Week. And on this day, perhaps mostly we think about palms. But before we go in thinking about uh, palms and in the way in which our American minds think it, and we, we start thinking about beaches filled with sand, warm water at our toes, a, a warm breeze under a, a, a sunny day, which I believe for many of us would be a, a welcome sight. Uh, today we think about palms in a, a different manner, from a, a different perspective. For thousands of years in the Middle East, palms have been representative of victory and triumph, of peace, and even of eternal life. And so as we think about palms, and, and as we think about those people back in that day, on that day in Jerusalem, putting palms before Jesus and, and waving them as he came into Jerusalem, we know that it was those things that were, were on their mind. The people were thinking about victory and triumph. As they looked at this man named Jesus, as they, had, as they reflected, as Luke tells us, on the, the many miracles that they had seen and witnessed from him. As they saw and perhaps believed that this was the son of David, the, the promised one who would deliver them, how could they not have victory and triumph on their mind? It is what they desired, it is what they wanted, it is what they were looking for. And it was their firm belief as they waved those palm branches that that victory and that triumph were certainly coming. And in fact, the people were also looking for something more, as we heard in the song that they sang. What did they, they say? They said, blessed is the, he who com- the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace, they said. They had peace on their mind. Peace that would last them even until the days of heaven. Peace that would last them until eternity. And so to to make that proclamation of everything that was on their mind, they made that proclamation with their palms. And certainly their palms prophesied correctly, didn't they? Because it was, in fact, victory and triumph that were coming. The, the people proclaimed it just as it was about to be, that this was the very reason that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, that these people might have peace. But amidst all of that fanfare, as they, they waved their palm branches, as they, as they looked to victory and triumph, as they hoped for peace, that would last forever. Certainly none of them could have imagined on that day, amidst all of that fanfare, what would take place in the coming days. None of them could have had in mind how that peace, how that victory would be achieved in the days ahead. But certainly, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem... What was coming in the days ahead was on his mind. As he no doubt looked at those palm branches and, and, and thought the people are proclaiming correctly, victory and triumph are coming, Jesus also had in, on his mind not just those palms, but certainly his passion. A word that we use to describe his, his suffering and his death. And though none of those people who were gathered there knew that this is how the week would end, Jesus knew that in the days ahead, he would be denied, he would be betrayed, he would be arrested, he would be tried, he would be sentenced, and he would be crucified. And so in order to think about the victory, Jesus certainly had to be thinking about the passion. And Jesus knew that in those weeks ahead, as he, as he rode into Jerusalem, it was not religious leaders, it was not the, the Roman Empire that he was going to battle against. The enemies that, 
that he was riding in to battle against and defeat were much greater. They were sin, death, and the devil. Enemies that had oppressed his people all the way since the time that Adam and Eve fell into sin. Enemies that you and I also know all about in how they oppress us and battle against us. Jesus knew that for such enemies, the battle would be fierce. And so as he went to to pay the wages of of sin, that that price would be great. As he went to to crush the devil's head, that that powerful devil would, would fight fiercely. And as he went to take away the sting of death, death would also sting him. This was on Jesus' mind, even as he rode amidst those palm branches. And certainly, as we gather today on this Palm Sunday, during this Holy Week, as we ponder and think about those palms and the victory that they proclaim, we must also ponder the passion of our Savior Jesus. We must also look ahead to to what is before us this week. Not skipping ahead to to Easter Sunday and the the triumph and the victory that we will fill this church with resounding sound with next week. But to also remember how important each of these events are that we will see in the week ahead. To slow down and think exactly what they mean. What it means that Jesus gives to us his very body and blood in the sacrament that he instituted on Thursday of that week. What it means as Jesus speaks with with purpose each of the seven words that he spoke as he hung on the cross. What it means that Jesus bowed his head and breathed his last what it means that Jesus was laid in a tomb, life not in him. Each of those things we must ponder, not just because of what they meant for Jesus, but because of what they mean for you and me. Because through that passion, we can also ponder what these palms mean. We can know that we have victory, We can know that we have triumph. We can know that we have peace. And we can know that each one of those things will last forever. Ponder those palms. But this week, ponder the passion too. Amen.